what I have to say to you today is based on my experience as a young man. I was born in 1943, and before I was 20 years old, in October 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis affected everyone in the world, and particularly in the United States. In response to the United States placing nuclear missiles around Russia, the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev as its leader, had placed nuclear missiles in Cuba. This had happened very recently, and the United States government under John F. Kennedy said to the Soviet Union, take those missiles out of Cuba, and there was a standoff which many people were concerned would lead to an exchange of nuclear missiles between the United States and the Soviet Union. And I remember that vividly. I remember that there were people who did not think they would live to see Christmas. And so I want to just give that background about myself and my generation, that we are very aware of these dangers. Human beings have the means to terminate human life on Earth. Nuclear weapons could end our existence relatively quickly if they were used either intentionally or accidentally to that effect. Because we still have them, we are in a situation somewhat like a family living in a house with loaded automatic weapons. It is dangerous, and history has already shown us how deadly dangerous it is. Recently, there has been important progress toward eliminating this particular threat to human existence. On January 22 of this year, the United Nations Treaty on Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons went into effect. Elaine White, Costa Rica's former UN ambassador who oversaw the treaty's creation, said, for the first time in history, nuclear weapons are going to be illegal in international law. The treaty is an important step, but there is a lot of work to do before the danger will be removed. And the government of Canada is not doing its share of the work. It has neither signed nor ratified the treaty. We Calgarians are very much aware of the danger of nuclear weapons. We can congratulate ourselves on this floating lantern peace ceremony now in its ninth year in Calgary, an annual reminder of this existential danger to human life on Earth. However, the city of Calgary could do more, and I will use Toronto's response to the treaty to suggest some things that we can do. On April 24th this year, the city of Toronto formally requested that the government of Canada sign the United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Following the City Council's reaffirmation of Toronto years ago, 2017, as a nuclear weapons-free zone. So these are things that cities can do. This municipal action came as a result of hard work from Canadian campaigners who called on the City Council of Toronto and the Board of Health to hold public hearings on the dangers of nuclear weapons and radiation fallout. Over 30 statements and letters from civil society were submitted to the public hearings, leading to the Board of Health recommending that City Council in Toronto request the Government of Canada to sign the treaty. With regard to a public opinion poll that was done by Nanos Research taken in March of 2021, 
this poll revealed that 74% of the Canadians who were surveyed are in favor of the Canadian government joining the treaty. Only 14% were opposed. And when the issue of pressure from the United States against Canada's joining the treaty was raised, 73% of Canadians still favored joining the treaty. It is not difficult to understand why those in office might be refusing to follow Canadian public opinion. Governments are under pressure from many directions, including pressure to move back into old, familiar, dysfunctional patterns of political behavior. What we, as responsible citizens, must do is to keep up the relentless pressure on the Canadian government to move forward, not back. So I will conclude this message with two specific suggestions. First, when we talk with candidates for Calgary's municipal elections, which are coming up in October of this year, Make a list of issues that are important to you personally for City Council to focus on in the year ahead and include the things that our city might do to follow Toronto's example of leadership toward the abolition of nuclear weapons. And second, at the time of Calgary's floating lantern peace ceremony each year, let's all consider learning what City Council has done about this and consider raising the issue with city council again each year when the floating lantern event occurs. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you a nuclear-free lifetime, both for you and for your children and grandchildren, and for theirs as well.